welcome to this week's video blog. Um, for this week's video blog, um, I'm going to be doing my wrap up for, um, since it's the end of August when I'm recording this, um, let's just call it the my end of summer wrap up because um, it was June and July um, that I was going to do a, a wrap up for at the beginning of August, but um, stuff happened and um, I got sick, I lost my voice, um, and then I was going to do it last week, but um, I ended up doing my um, What to Watch During Droughtlander, which I do um, every year for the Outlander break to give you some stuff to watch in between while we wait for Outlander to come back. And uh, this, the video that I did was for um, what to watch during Droughtlander Game of Thrones. And I finished the series and I ended up talking, <laughs> talking about it for three hours. Uh, Cause apparently I had a lot to say. Um, so by the end of it, I was kind of talked out. Uh, so I didn't end up uh, wanting to record any more videos after that. Um, so I waited for this week where we will do my wrap up for the summer. Um, it's been mostly a miss for the summer. Um, I've had a, f a few like really good reads, but mostly misses. And, and that kind of made me sad. Uh, we'll talk about the misses first because that um, those will go by faster. Uh, <laughs> so for my first, my first miss was a bit of a disappointment because I really love this author and it was C.D. Rice's Bodyguard. Now, I love C.D. Rice. I loved her um, Marriage Duet uh, series um, and I loved uh, Prince Charming. But um, Bodyguard, just like it didn't grab me. I don't know if it was because I would have liked it better if, because it's, he's supposed to be the bodyguard to this singer uh, girl, but he ends up, like, her, her choreographer is her best friend, and her choreographer is dealing with this douchey um, ex-boyfriend, or no, ex-boyfriend, um, and so he, the, the ex-boyfriend is, like, kind of like threatening her and um so the bodyguard ends up sort of being her bodyguard more than the best friend singer bodyguard um and it i don't know like it, it just didn't it just didn't grab me for some reason um i don't know if i would have liked it better if it had been um the singer who who had been the one that was like actually that he had act was actually protecting, but just no, nope, just no. Nope. Um, then there was um, I married a master, which I same kind of thing. Just did not did not do it for me. Didn't grab me. No, like real like particular um, reason. Just meh. Just didn't do it for me. Um, the next one was Call Me Daddy by Jade West. Now, I loved Bait by Jade West. I love that book so much. So I was excited to give her another try with this book and this book just did not and it's sort of a daddy kink fetish kind of book um and like yeah it it definitely plays to the whole like taboo um thing like um and, and it's definitely like not for everyone just the same way as bait was not for everyone but I don't, like, I think like, just my ick factor just kind of was a little too, too flipped, flipped on for this one. I just, with bait, it was, 
these two uh, kind of adult consenting um, people uh, were, um, engaging in this this kind of rape fantasy deal but it was she was totally on board and she was like she sought him out and um, it, it was like I don't know it, it felt like two equals on an equal footing um, engaging in this fantasy with call me daddy it was um, yes he was considerably older than her and it was just it just felt um, she was 18 and I think he was 43 which the age thing like that didn't that doesn't bother me um, it was just she was 18 and she just seemed like a lot younger she seemed very childish even though uh, she tried to play it off like oh like that she was she smoked cigarettes and she went to clubs and that kind of thing but just her um, demeanor was very sort of childish and he um, he rescues her uh, after her friend uh, ditches her and um, at a club and then her purse gets stolen and so she is walking in the rain and she gets into this stranger's car as you do uh, because that apparently is a better idea than um, wa walking, continuing to walk in the rain. Um, and well, yeah, like this this creepy guy is kind of tailing her. Uh, so I guess she feels like this guy in like the fancy car is probably not a serial killer. <laughs> so let me get into this car. Um, and she, um, I think like she, I'm not sure if she, like she was raised, like her mother had issues or if I'm confusing that with a different story. But I know that like she was supposedly never got a chance to like really be a child. She was responsible for, I think her, her, her mother or her siblings or something. Um, and they live in like a really, really poor uh, part of town. And when she, they get, she gets back to the apartment and it's ransacked and just awful. And um, there's a scene with like a ba a teddy bear that uh, I guess she was given as a, as a, as a child. And um, she's very attached to, and she's like just sobbing over this bear that they that they destroyed like they ripped it apart um the uh all the people who had stolen her purse that had the her id in it so they went and and went to her address and and trashed the place and i guess robbed her from her stuff there um and the guy nick i think his name was um is like there with her and comforting her and brings her to his house because she um, doesn't have a place to stay anymore because her, her place is like completely destroyed. Um, so she's staying at his house and he puts her in her in his daughter's she, what he says is his daughter's room, which is all like set up in like like a little girl's room. And she like she loves it because she never got to be a little girl and like I don't know it just it felt like really kind of squicky that she's like there in this little girl's room and then it turns out that um, the it wasn't technically his daughter's room it was he fell in love with this woman who had a little girl and um, they they lived there and that was like that little girl's room and but then um, the 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 girlfriend had like a, a, a father or a, a husband or a boyfriend that wanted her back and but he was abusive to her but she went to go meet with him anyway and on and she took the little girl with her in the car and there was a car accident and she and the little girl died and and Nick always kind of felt responsible that he wasn't able to protect um, them and so 
that I guess inspired his 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 kink of like wanting to protect and have a little girl. Um, okay, again, I was like a little squicky, but like I, I think that Nick could have benefited from some therapy uh, to deal with his guilt issues. But okay, I'll go with it. Um, so he tells her. I don't remember what the heroine's name was, probably Olivia or Al Abigail or something like that, because that seems to be the, the default heroine name in taboo stories. Um, <laughs> so he uh, tells her that he wants to have this arrangement with her, that he, um, that because the, there's an attraction growing between them, and he's like, I don't, you know, if, if, we're going to engage in this. There's things that like you need to know. Like I don't want to take advantage of you. I want this to be like something that you want, kind of thing. And she's all like, on the one hand, she feels attracted to him, but on the other hand, she thinks of him as a father figure, kind of thing. Which, th again, that flipped like another squick meter in me, because. I'm okay, it's weird, it's gonna sound weird, but clearly I'm okay with fictional incest in the sense of like, um, I loved Fl Flowers in the Attic, uh, I love all of E.C. Andrews, almost all of E.C. Andrews books, um, I love Game of Thrones. So clearly, fictional incest does not bother me. But it just felt like she, for all her like sexual feelings and sexual desires and stuff, she did not feel to me like she was on the same level consent-wise with him. Like, he wanted, like, he, he wanted to take care of her. He, like, buys her clothes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and he, you know, tells her the truth about um, the girlfriend and, and the daughter that died and, um, how he wants to take care of her, and um, he wants her to be, like, be his little girl, but he wants them to have, like, a sexual dynamic. And, but he, he makes it clear, like, only if it's something that she wants as well. And it's like, I don't think that she had the maturity, even though, like, she was 18, but she just did feel like, to me, like, she had the maturity to make that arrangement. Uh, there's a part where, like, he, he sends her to college, like, he makes her a, um, lunch and, and gives, puts it, like, in a lunch box. I don't know if it's, like, an, it wasn't, like, described fully. I don't remember. I don't know if it was, like, a lunch box, like, in a, like, a, Dora the Explorer type of lunch pail <laughs> that he sent her off with, or if it was like um, a sort of like more mature kind of just lunch bag kind of thing. Um, I, I don't remember if that, I don't remember if that was uh, described. Um, but like, okay, and then like even her friend is like, like, don't you find it a little weird that this old man like wants to take care of you and like, you know, has this like, kink of like wanting to like be with you but and and she was like like no like what's wrong what's wrong with that kind of thing and acting like she's like so mature about it and that it was just something that they engaged in and whatever okay i could understand if if it was a kink they engaged in in the sense of like when they were at home and and I'm not sure if I'm like explaining it of like how I would have been okay with it. And, like, he just goes on and on about like her her white fluffy socks and how they turn him on and how she's perfect because her her um she doesn't wear like sexy lingerie, she wears like simple cotton panties and they're like and then he when he said I want to shave you so that you're bare like a little girl. Nope, I'm out. 
nope, that's not daddy kink, that's pedophilia. Sorry, no, nope, I'm out. Because you can have that dad, like that showed to me that he didn't want like a relationship with a woman and engage in the daddy kink kind of thing. Like he wanted to a little girl. And it makes me wonder if the whole story, like I didn't, I, that's when I stopped reading when you like, when guys tell a woman that they want her to shave so that she can be bare there, that uh, that's when I'm, I'm out. Cause it's like, no, you don't get to dictate what a woman does to her body. Like, no, 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 goodbye. You're out, goodbye. And it makes me wonder if, again, like I said, I didn't finish because I stopped there. If the whole story about the girlfriend with the daughter uh, running off to like meet the abusive ex-husband or ex-boyfriend was just a story he invented when the truth is they were probably running away from his pedophiliac ass because he probably wanted to the little girl. I'm sorry, just Jade West she worked for me amazingly in bait, but it was because it was two consenting adults engaging in this rape fantasy. Call Me Daddy was something altogether different, in my opinion. For some people, it worked. For me, it did not. It really did not. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was, um, that was Call Me Daddy. Uh, what was another one? I know. Oh, Hero in the Highlands by Suzanne Enoch. Um, this one didn't really work for me because the, like, my time, my reading time is limited, so I like, you know, with, with stories that I read, you know, get to it, get to the point, and um, let's, let's, let's be off. With Hero in the Highlands, the whole prologue is him in battle. Like, he's supposed to, he inherits this kingdom, as, as dukes do. Um, uh, or, yeah, he was like a duke or something, but he, he inherited a, a property, but it was, it was, he was English, and it was being run by this Scottish, uh, it actually belonged to a Scottish um, family, and I think he like he had to. He falls in love with like the 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 woman who's like who's living there and that kind of thing. But the whole prologue was him in battle, and then it's not until like the very end of the prologue that he gets a letter from uh, his commander or whatever, telling him about that he's inherited this kingdom. The whole prologue was unnecessary. It could have just been like, he's coming like off the battle, gets the letter, we're off to the story. But I don't like, I don't know if like they put, if she put the prologue in there to show like what a strong, uh, efficient, good soldier he is. I mean, I feel like you could have like worked that in <laughs> to the story, like throughout the plot, but yeah, it, it, it just felt really, really slow. Really slow for me. So did not work. Um, let me see which one's next. Uh, More Than Want You by Shayla Black. Now, I think I've, I've tried another Shayla Black before this, or I'm, I'm not sure if I was, if I'm con confusing it with someone else, something else, someone else, and it was, um, I think it was Wicked, Wicked Game, or something like that, where it was um, an erotic historical. More Than Want You was um, about this, and, and I didn't get this from the blurb, so when I realized it in the story, I was kind of like, eh. Uh, was about this real estate mogul guy, which I don't know why, but real estate to me like, guys who, like, work in real estate, like, or any, like, sort of, like, real estate as, like, a, a, a career subplot thing, and, like, it, I don't know, I find it boring. It doesn't interest me. <laughs> like, I don't find it, like, a sexy job. 
Um, but yeah, he's a real estate guy and he's trying to stop either his cousin or his brother from like um, acquiring this deal. Uh, so because the brother apparently is led by his penis, our hero is going to find a woman to seduce the brother uh, to sort of um, distract him so that he can close the deal instead of the, the brother or cousin. Uh, but surprise, surprise, the hero is the one who ends up falling for the woman that he uh, had, had intended for his, his brother. Now, okay, that could work, but I just found, like, he was this, this, you know, the uptight businessman uh, kind, and she was this um, wild, um, multicolored haired, or, or like purple haired, um, wild child, free spirit, uh, singer type. And I, I like, okay, if you're gonna put these two together, I have to buy that there's a reason that they would be attracted to each other, and that they would want to be together. Um, and I just, I did not feel it, like, at all. I felt no chemistry between them. I felt no, like, why? Why is this man attracted to this woman? Why is this woman like be attracted to this man? Because I feel like they have nothing in common. And it just, it, it did not work for me. Um, so the, I'm not sure if there was another one or another two in ebook. Try to doing the thing. I'm trying to do the thing. There we are. Capture Me by Anna Zares. Now, I've heard, like, amazing things about her, and, and, you know, I'm, like, all into, like, the whole, like, erotic romance thing, and uh, I'm for that. This did not work for me, because... Um, it's a guy and a girl, and uh, she is an interpreter, um, but she's actually a spy. Um, and he is um, a, a part of uh, the Russian, I guess, mob. Um, or, like, he works for the mobster that she's trying to get information on. Like, she's there to kind of seduce the head mobster guy, and... And, and get information and to stop him from doing this arms deal or whatever. Um, and so she and the guy, um, she and the hero uh, end up sleeping together because it turns out that the guy that she was there to, the head mobster guy, um, either wasn't interested in her or maybe suspected that she was after something because uh, she was blatantly like trying to like she flirt with him and like all that but uh so she and the hero have this attraction between each other uh but she's all like in her head she's like no i i can't like lose my focus and and i'm here to like do a mission and blah 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 um but they end up having sex um and uh then the whole point is like that the she finds out after that uh, she, that they're going to actually shoot the plane that he and the mobster guy are, and the Russian mobster guy are in, um, to stop the deal from happening, um, because she was, uh, I guess, unsuccessful in, like, stopping it the initial way. Um, and then, I I'm not sure how she gets on the plane, because, like, I stopped reading after a pr point that I'm going to tell you, um, so she stops, uh, she, supposedly they both end up on the plane, and they end up, and, because he finds out that she betrayed him, and was a spy, I guess, and, and eventually he's gonna find that out. Um, and they, they crash, but they survive, and they end up, like, I don't know, stranded on an island or something. And, of course, there's angry feelings, because she betrayed him. Um, so, but I stopped reading, because after the love scene, uh, we get, like, the, the two points of view kind of thing, and I don't mind that, 
Um, but I did mind the fact that it we get you get her point of view, and then the next chapter you get his point of view of literally the exact same scene. Like it's not like he's going about his business doing, you know, it's moving the story for, further along. No, no, no. You get his point of view from the exact moment that she opens the door, step by step, what you just read in the first chapter. And I'm like, I just read this. Why do I need it from his point of view? Like, you can just give me like his thoughts on what had happened between them as he's going about as the story moves forward. But no, you're stopping the story just to give me, I guess, two, two sex scenes, even though it's the same sex scene. Are you trying to pass it off as two sex scenes? Because it's two points of view? And I just, you know, I have a lot of books to read. I don't have time to like just regurgitate what I just read. So um, those are, I think, the books that, yeah. So as you can see, like we're half an hour and those are just the books that I did not enjoy. That I either DNF'd or just, yeah, did not work for me. Um, getting on to the books that did work for me. Um, I'm encouraged <laughs> with the books I'm reading now, let's just say. Um, let me, because I think when, the la my last wrap up that I did, I think I told you that I was almost finished The Boy and His Ribbon by Pepper Winters. I loved this book. I loved this book so much. It was so good. I am waiting for, um, I, I'm like, I'm gonna like read the, the second book in the series because I, um, I think it's The Girl and Her Wren or something. Uh, but The Boy and His, and his uh, Ribbon by Pepper Winters. I loved so much. It was so good. And I highly, highly recommend it. Even though, um, there's no, I don't think, actual sex between the hero and the heroine in, in the book. Like, the sexual tension is off the charts, and I'm pretty sure we're probably going to get it in book two. And it's, um, this little boy, Ren who is uh, either sold by his family or kidnapped um, into being this um, farmhand to these horrible people um, who they, um, they take children or children are sold to them to work their land and they are horribly abused and um, the couple have a little baby girl named uh, Della. And on the day that Ren decides he's going to escape, he's 10. And he makes his, his escape, but he doesn't realize until it's too late that Della, baby infant Della, has climbed into his backpack. Um, so he, like, he, I guess he doesn't notice because like he has a lot of stuff in the backpack, so he assumes that it's supposed to be heavy. <laughs> Um, so then he has a choice, like, of if he's, if he goes back, the family, the, the, the father is probably either going to kill him or hurt him really bad. I mean, they've already, like, amputated one of his fingers, um, as a punishment. Um, and so he decides that he's going to run away and keep the baby because he can't go back. Um, so it starts off with them living in the woods, um, and just gradually they, they grow up and they're just these, they're these two like wild children who live in the woods and occasionally they go into town to like get supplies and, and that kind of stuff. 
Um, and then Ren gets really, really sick. And they hide out in this barn and are discovered by this family. Uh, this wonderful family who um, agree to help them and, and keep his um, secret. Um, not um, like with, they think, because this is what Ren has told everybody, that the Della is his sister. And they just know that they've run away from home. And uh, so the family agrees that they're going to like take care of them and, and, and Ren will help him you know, work his, work his farm. So they grow up and uh, like, because of how close they've been, they have this very like, Ren and Della have this very like loving, close relationship, which because they're actually not related and they don't have that genetic bond, it does actually start to develop into something more when, um, like it starts for Della first, when I think she starts uh, turning, I think 10, uh, because the, the family that they live with have a daughter, have a teenage daughter who, uh, you know, starts getting like interested in Ren um, and, Ren sort of starts feeling teenage boy feelings. Um, and this woman, this girl, like he and her start kind of like fooling around and, and Della starts feeling jealous for the first time and realizes that slowly she realizes that it's because she's developing these feelings for Ren, who is not actually her brother. Um, so there's this one time that uh, she's talking to the girl and the girl, the, the teenage girl, and the girl is like, you know, if you like a boy, you should, you know, tell him, and, you know, Della doesn't want to say that it's Ren because they all think that he's, he's her brother. Um, and the girl, Cassie is like, oh, you know, if you like a boy, you should tell him and, you know, like life is short and Della's little teenage preteen brain, um, decides that that's what she's going to do. Not necessarily to tell him, but there's, there's a scene where like he's asleep and she wants to know what it's like to kiss a boy because she, she does end up kissing the son of the, 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 the son of the, the, the family that she's with, Cassie's brother. Um, but she wants to know what it will feel like to kiss Ren. So she kisses him, but like in his dream, he's sort of like out of it where he's kissing this, this faceless person, this faceless woman, this faceless girl. And it's bringing up feelings that like he's never experienced or he's never felt before, even with Cassie. And it like flips the switch on for him. So when he op when he realizes that it's Della who's kissed him, he's horrified because even though he knows that they're not brother and sister, he sees himself as her, her family, her brother, her protector, her, he cannot even fathom it being okay to have sexual feelings for Della. And so he like completely loses his shit on her and just makes her feel horrible. And uh, then like, th th they're like arguing and she's crying and she's like apologizing. Um, and then the family comes in and is like, what the heck, what's going on? And, you know, Ren, I think, I think he tells them or, or Della tells them what happened. And they're all horrified um, and she runs away and then Ren is like to the, the, I think the father is something like, oh, you know, you have to like, you know, bring her back or, um, but like, I understand that like, you can't stay here anymore. 
And in my opinion, I think they all overreacted to what Della did. Even like Cassie is like disgusted. And I'm like, okay. Ren is a boy. Della is a 12 year old girl who is basically just discovering hormones for the first time. I, nobody is saying what she did was appropriate. However, and especially when Ren reveals to them that no, they're not actually brother and sister. Especially then, he's, I think, in 18, 19, I think, something like that. Yeah, something like, he's like, I don't think he's in his 20s yet, or maybe he just hit his 20s. Um, especially when it's revealed that, that they're not brother and sister. I think they took everything way out of proportion. Um, so they end up leaving, and um, I think... Does Della come back to Ren, or does Ren find her? Um, but they end up reunited and living in uh, this apartment where uh, Della goes to school and Ren works. Um, and like they get older, and but the 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 attraction and the feelings and stuff are still there. Um, and it, it, it's unavoidable. Like their their feelings for each other are just going stronger and stronger, and then like he starts going out with all these women to try and like get rid of these feelings that he has for her. But of course it's not working because it's not other women that he wants. It's Della. And she's, you know, feeling heartbroken and rejected every time he like goes to like these other women. So he, she decides, well, screw you. I'm going to go find an, uh, other boys. <laughs> so she goes and like starts, you know, like throwing herself these other boys. Um, she deliberately seeks out a guy at a party to have sex with and lose her virginity to, um, to prove to Ren that he means nothing to her in that sense, but that only ends up hurting both of them more, and um, they fight, and, and at the end of it, I think either she leaves or he leaves and it's just it's so messy and like angsty and just beautiful and I completely recommend it um yeah Ren um The Boy in His Ribbon by Pepper Winters um right now I am excuse me I am, I just want to try and get the, the title. Yeah, I'm reading The Billionaire's Pet by Ivy Lane, and I'm really enjoying that very, very much. That's my audio um, book that I'm listening to on commute on my way to the evil day job. Um, and I am also reading... cover for it. Pretty Broken Girl by Gianna E. Mann. Um, and I'm really, really liking that one. Um, let me see if I can read you the blurb for it. Okay, yeah. A divorced couple battles for control in the boardroom, but things heat up when their competition reaches the bedroom. Ten years ago, ten years ago, Dakota, oh, that words. Ten years ago, Dakota divorced the love of her life for all the wrong reasons. She has no idea who walked through 
through, through her office door ten years later as her new boss. More handsome than ever, determined to make her pay for her sins. Her knees go weak every time she looks at him. Too bad. He hates her. He's determined to make her life hell. The only thing she knows for sure, they can still heat up the sheets. He thinks he can break her, but she's got other plans. From the boardroom to the bedroom, oh, excuse me, from the bedroom to the boardroom, Sam and Dakota are locked in a battle of wits and desire. One of them will break. One of them will pay. Both of them want to win. Neither of them expects to fall in love again. Divorce has never been so hot. I am enjoying this one immensely. So good. And um, I'm looking forward to reviewing um, those two books uh, for my next wrap-up. Hopefully it won't be too long, but yeah. So summer was pretty much a dud for me, um, except for um, that one book. <laughs> the Boy and His Ribbon? Was that like the one book that I read that I enjoyed? That, and I actually finished? Um, I'm trying to think. I think so. Let me double check. If maybe I put it somewhere else. I think that's going to be it for this week's video blog yeah yeah it was pretty much just the boy in his um boy in his ribbon <laughs> it was like the one book i read this summer that i loved um if i remember another one cuz I, I i'm bad at like keeping track but if I remember another one, I'll put it in my next wrap-up and bring it up um, and let you guys tell you guys about it. Um, so that's going to be it for this week's video blog. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash author ejamie. Like my Facebook page at facebook.com slash author ejamie. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!